here's where queue promises are great. You can return the data. Let's append something to it. Let's add some more stuff. So we're going to say data uh, this is cool equals 10. And then we're going to return data. And because we're in a queue promise, the value you return is passed into, well, the next promise. And keep in mind that because each of these are scoped, the data here is going to refer to the new data we're passed in. So when we run this, we get the object that has been augmented. And this way, you can pass all of the information through your entire promise chain. And that's how you start your promise chain. And then when you're done, of course, you can let it be. The other way I want to talk about starting a promise chain is working with node methods. Now, this is something that's very, very common, you have to remember, because a lot of node methods that are built into the framework are asynchronous, especially all of the file system methods, things dealing with IO, HTTP. Again, these are all asynchronous stuff. You have to deal with it a lot. Well, Q has the built-in way of easily handling this because you want an easy way to say, okay, the FS modules, they all have callbacks, but I don't want to deal with callbacks in my code. I want everything to be a promise. So Q gives you a method called denotify. The denotify method takes in a node style function or method. So in this case, fs read file. Remember, the callback has the error first callback, and then it has the information that's returned. This is a node style callback because the error is always first. And it takes that in and it gives you back a method that you can call that's a promise. And so this allows you to very easily chain things together. So the example we had long ago where we read and then appended and then write it can be simplified down to this, where first we read the file and then we append information to that same file and then we write information and each of these is a promise itself and then we're done and that's it. And the wonderful thing about promises again is that if any of these methods have an error, if you can't write, if you can't append, if you can't read for some reason, the chain stops and it falls down to this method, the catch method, which is a synonym for fail in the queue library. You can use either one, catch or fail, doesn't matter, because these are queue promises, remember. And if any of these happen to break for some reason, it falls immediately into the fail method and you can handle the error there, which means most powerfully, every time you call one of these promises, you don't need to handle the error but rather you can handle the error in one place, which is super, super powerful and makes asynchronous error handling and asynchronous methods much, much easier to deal with.